This is one of those really simple artistic ideas that I just wish I understood in more detail early on. It's basic. Images are not just created as a simple finished image. There's often a process. There are steps. So for every one drawing that you see, there's often multiple drawings that supported the creation of that finished product. Again, this is something that I resisted early on. And I think understanding it really helped me to develop my career as a working artist a lot better and to enjoy the process of creating images, especially more finished images in my working life. I want to unpack this concept more. So hopefully you can learn this idea in more detail. Let's get started. Just quickly, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for 20 years and I'm here to help you draw cool stuff from your imagination and to master the craft of line and color illustration and also to embrace the challenge of drawing, which I think is really important. These things are tricky to understand and I think the best way forward is to embrace the fact that these concepts can be a little bit challenging to get your head around. Now, this idea of images being built in layers is something that I knew, and you probably know it already. It's the idea that often we do preparatory sketches. We do thumbnail sketches, you know, little ideas, and, you know, a lot of really detailed illustrations actually have, you know, very detailed rough versions of those illustrations which come before. And everyone has a different process for this. But, you know, for instance, early on, you know, I was really into comics and I'd read a lot of comics and I knew that there was a storyboard involved. I knew that before the finished image, people planned it out, but I didn't really know why. And to me, it sort of seemed like this extra step, like, oh, okay, I guess I've got to do that. And it really took me a long time to understand why, like why that storyboard is there. Another good example would be that, you know, when I was looking at illustrators was someone like Dean Cornwell, one of the, you know, great names from the golden age of illustration. And I would see in the art books that there were these detailed, laborious preparations for the finished images. And I liked the finished images. I, I was like, that looks amazing. But it really felt like that amount of effort and sort of redrawing just didn't seem to be the kind of energetic way of creating images that I wanted. And, you know, I would see the finished work of the artists that I sort of admired and, you know, people like Frank Frazetta or again, you know, um, comic artists like Joe Mad at the time. And I would sort of look at that and say, this has so much energy. And what I want to do is create work with energy and repeating the drawing sort of robbed it of energy. And I think that's really the key is often when we repeat ourselves, we sort of lose energy and spontaneity in the work. And it's interesting because it took me a long time to realize and maybe a lot of people a long time to realize that Frank Frazetta actually planned his images quite a bit. And for every sort of famous Frazetta image, like, you know, your Death Dealer image or, you know, any of these big illustrations that he did, there was probably quite a detailed little watercolor rough that was a plan for it. And, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think that kind of having that plan is maybe what allowed him to act so spontaneously and with so much energy in the final sort of execution of the painting. So again, this is a nuanced concept, but it took me a long time to really get my head around it and understand that this is something that is done. And in many cases, great images are always planned. Now, if you want to check out my process, you can check out my line and color quick start guide, which goes over the way that I create using a basic, simple process that's easy to master, the type of line and color illustrations that I create. You get all the brushes, all the Photoshop documents, and my process for how I create line and color comic book style illustrations in Photoshop. Go check it out. One of the things that I talk about in that line and color quick start guide is that developing a strong thumbnail 
and almost being confident in your ability to translate that thumbnail into a finished image is one of the things that A, gives you a lot of confidence in your own ability to create images from your imagination, but it also helps you be a working artist. It helps you sort of communicate with other people and let other people be involved in your process. Now, I feel like that can be a little bit confusing because these days the world is full of artists who are sharing their process on Instagram and other social media sites and they kind of have this one and done sort of spontaneous artistic creation process that you can see. I mean, the most prominent artist who does this is Kim Jong-ji who just sort of creates with brush pens images without that sketch, without the foundation. And again, I think that can be a little bit tricky if you're starting out to get your head around like, well, how does that fit in again with sort of what I'm saying? And I think the key there is that that to a certain degree is performance art. A big part of how we appreciate, the, appreciate those images is seeing how they are created. And I think that adds value to the image there. But the question is, well, is that how most artists will create work in a professional environment? And is that a reliable process which will give you confidence on your journey as an artist? Again, that's something you have to decide. But again, in my opinion, I, th I would say those are very advanced high level techniques that you can build up to. But again, starting where you are doing a lot of underdrawing and you're repeating the process is a really good way to boost your confidence. There's multiple layers to the concept of people just spontaneously creating art. And I don't think this idea is ever going to go away because for me, when I was just looking at people creating art in books, again, I was sort of entranced by the magic trick of it where I see the finished result and I kind of imagine how that was created. And again, that sort of gave me a little bit of a false idea of how art was made because I think people like that mystique on the work. They like to kind of say, hey, look at this, it looked easy. And we don't see the process, we don't see the effort involved, we don't maybe see the steps. And again, every artist has their steps and their process. For instance, a lot of artists who might be very spontaneous have to put a lot of effort into kind of creating the right environment potentially so that, you know, it's not a matter of just always being able to do that. I remember hearing, you know, artists who were very spontaneous in their work were also a little bit more of a capital A artist, i.e. they would have a lot of artistic block. Sometimes they just couldn't perform. So the art looked amazing and spontaneous and their process was sort of, you know, like, oh, I just kind of start hacking away at it and see what happens and see where it takes me. But on the flip side of that, you know, you, the, the rest of the interview with that artist would be this kind of sob story of the starving artist and how hard it was. And, you know, the fact that they didn't like working professionally and they found it hard and sometimes they couldn't create work and sometimes they weren't feeling it. And again, you know, that's not necessarily a recipe for happiness as a working artist. I would, you know, put that to you. Another thing that I think is really important there is that to a certain degree, we are always looking at that magic trick. And if you think of most influencer behavior on Instagram or other TikTok or social media platforms, they're putting their best foot forward. And one of the things about sketchy art is a good trick is to make sure that you only show the ones that worked out. You, we don't always see the stuff that sort of was performance art that maybe didn't perform so well. And you don't see the rough cuts. You, you, you're seeing the edited finished results. So keep that in mind. It's really important as an artist to look at the craft of it and really ask, how was that done? How was that actually done? How was that video created? You know, did, is was the actual creation process as smooth and as polished and as finished as that looked like? And I think in many cases you can see that those artists who are just sort of sketching around, again, someone like Kim Jong-ji, uh, you know, that, that is legit. You know, they're just drawing and it is what it, it is. What it is. Um, I, I think a lot of other stuff is maybe nicely edited to make it look as if it's kind of fun and easy and quick and spontaneous. But again, we don't actually know how the creation process is and how that person felt as they created it. 
and I think creating images with an iterative process where we do sort of maybe do some redrawing and it seems more technical, that is going to be something that gives you a more reliable, comfortable, happy working process in the long run that's very reliable. And I think that's better overall, in my opinion. That's what I recommend to everyone who's starting out on the illustration journey. The reason that I wish I really properly understood this is because I thought it was very technical in the beginning. And again, I had those feelings of, oh man, I got to redraw this a hundred times. And, you know, I've got to do these preparatory sketches before I even do this kind of finish painting because I've got it sort of in my head, you know, I know how cool it's going to be. I've just got to sort of, you know, get to the finish line. I've just sort of got to create it. And I think what I didn't understand is that I would look at those preparatory sketches and they seemed very technical to me because they sort of weren't the finished product. And a similar way, you know, I looked at people doing storyboards for comics is it seemed like, well, that's just an extra step. I just want to get to it, you know, and because I'm a spontaneous you know, artist and I want the emotion to be there. And the real thing that I was missing is that having an iterative process and sketching around in the beginning is where you can play. That is where most of the fun happens. And I think not just in terms of, you know, it's more fun to kind of sketch and have ideas and then, you know, the finishing is boring. I, I've heard a lot of people say that. I don't find that the case. Again, it's a different feeling. One that the finishing is more cathartic, whereas the beginning is more experimental. But having those steps really allows you to play and experiment in a way that's sort of not possible when you're trying to create something, you know, completely finished from the get-go. It's a different thing and it can actually be a lot more fun because you know that you can play around, you can experiment, you can redraw, you can come up with different ideas and the imagination and the feeling that I get when I'm sort of sketching or iterating or, you know, doing these construction drawings is one of, you know, creativity and fun. When I look at them, they seem sort of technical, you know, because they often have, you know, lines everywhere, perspective lines, and, you know, they're sort of sketchy and rough, you know, I've sort of hacked everything out. But the experience of doing that is one of, you know, the true artistic experimentation and exploration and freedom. You know, that's where I get the freedom to experiment and play. And I think that's something that I was missing. And that's something, again, I want to share with you because that really is the goal, is, is to have a good mix of being able to work as a professional artist and have a reliable process so you know you can work your way through any image. Be able to include other people in the process because that's just something we have to do as working artists. But also give yourself some space to play. Give yourself some space to learn. And again, it's this idea of expanding the sketchy construction phases that I think gives you the most freedom and true artistic experimentation and the ability to learn and iterate and redraw and um, play without worrying that anyone's going to see it, you know, that that's going to be you know, a finished product. So again, it's a simple concept. Images are made up of, you know, a series of, you know, smaller images and steps. And I think that this helps us not only do it, but understand it and work our way throughout the creative process as well. So it's not just a tool from a practical standpoint, it's a tool from a mental standpoint where, again, at some point you have freedom and creativity, endless opportunity. And then again, we sort of clarify the image and it's that process that helps me and hopefully you, um, us as artists, create things from our imagination and put them down onto the page. Anyway, that's all I've got. Catch you around. Happy drawing.